these ladies are super, super knowledgeable about the conditions and documents section. And this is stuff we get asked all the time. And, you know, people get adjusted. They, they come into the system and they learn how to submit and they learn a few other things. But they tend to not utilize the conditions and documents this um, portion of it for all that it can do. And I think you're going to learn a lot of things that even as we were collaborating on this, um, I know that we each had a few takeaways that we learned from each other. So it's so great for, you know, people who have their own process and are, are quite masterful with it at this point to be able to come together and share that with each other. So that's what we're here to do today and to give to all of you. So without further ado, um, housekeeping matter questions, I prefer to go in the Q&A. There is a Q&A as well, the chat. It's very nice to have um, people chatting back and forth in there, love to see that. But question wise, it is easier in Q&A because then people can clearly see the questions and answers. Uh, we will be sticking to the topic of the day though. We want to be very respectful of everyone's time and we have so much material to cover that it's going to be super useful for all. So we will not be taking many uh, questions, particularly those off topic. If there is something that is very on topic, then I will um, be happy to bring it to forth. But um, yes, well, please keep in mind when you do ask your questions, uh, we do have a training team at newton.ca email that you can forward those questions to um, outside of the session today. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Julie, which you probably all know by now, the fabulous Julie Jeffrey, and she's gonna take it away. Well, hello everyone. We are once again at Velocity Masterclass. It must be Thursday, right, Sarah? We are heading into a long weekend. We are we are all excited for that long weekend. But let's finish the week strong and let's dig into all of the amazing things about the conditions and documents section. I'm a bit obsessed with this part of the Velocity. Um, I love it. I think it's I think it's one of the places where we can find the most efficiency, uh, where we can do you know really that idea of you know, putting less hours in and being more productive. So you all know I love the idea of let's work less, let's close more deals, let's earn more. So let's dig in. I want to introduce my guests. They are awesome. First of all, just going to say that. Uh, I have been in other mastermind groups uh, with Marcy and Denise. So Marcy, how about you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your business um, tell us if you're working with a partner or you have any staff working with you and how long you've been using Velocity. Okay, uh, so Marcy Dean, I'm in North Van. I have been a broker since 2007. Um, came from a banking background, but with a pause in between to raise kids. I started with Velocity very soon after it was introduced. Um, Sarah, I want to say 2017, maybe like it's been a while. I was one of the first adopters. And it's funny that you said people get on this and don't adopt the conditions and document thing. That was one of the first things I got pretty excited about. I do have an assistant, but she's not in my office. She's remote and she's my compliance and document person. So we had some major struggles back in the day, just trying to coordinate gathering documents, um, emails were the bane of my existence. People never CC the assistant. So then we wouldn't be all in the same page, right? Awesome. Yeah. And uh, you know what you said something to me when, when, when I, so you started in a velocity a lot sooner than I did. And then uh, we had a chat about it and I was really motivated by the fact you were using it. I was like, okay, if you're using it, I trust your opinion. I need to get into this system. I need to try it. And you said something so interesting, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you said that you had actually had a full-time staff person, or maybe even more than one person, and you're finding so much efficiency with some of the systems you're using, Velocity is your main submission system, mm -hmm. that you actually reduced your staff time. Is that right? Am I right on that? Yeah, I had someone working for me, it, yeah, back then that was helping me with a whole bunch of other things and CRM, and my volume was like a third of what I'm doing now. So I've gone, you know, tripled or more, well this year, I don't even know who knows our numbers anymore. It's all a blur, but it's ridiculous. And I, I'm down to, you know, one person helping me with a little bit of marketing on contract and my assistant that does document and compliance. So. Wow, that's incredible. So we're going to really dig into some of the efficiencies you're finding. Uh, Denise, you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your business. I know you have a few people working with you. Uh, you guys, you, you will not believe Denise is one of the most organized, efficient, 
obsessive brokers I know about how she runs her business. She has kids, um, so she's a mom and she's a big believer in the work less, make more concept. And so some days I, I can't even keep up with how all, all of her ideas on efficiency. So tell us a bit about yourself, Denise, and your business. Which is funny because I really just learned it from you guys. Um, <laughs> so I, I've been a mortgage broker since um, December 2016, which is the best time to come into mortgage brokering, if you remember. Um, and I adopted Velocity in 2017, and then I only used it for the document collection. I had some, some issues, and so I was actually only using it as a document collector forever, which is really funny. I only in the last year or so, totally adopted the system and, and forgot my password for anything else. Um, I have a team of people. So I have um, uh, a mortgage agent who works with me. I have a assistant who works with me. And then we're just onboarding um, another person this month. So, uh, but the document collection for me, it just, it, it was so low stress and it was easier for the clients. So it's, um, it's something I'm really excited to talk to people about. Wow. So you were literally using the middle of the system at first. And then that is fascinating because you're the very first person I've ever heard who said they started in the middle. I think I need to revamp my teaching style, Sarah. I can't believe this. You started in the middle and then you went back to the beginning and now you're using all the pieces. That's one thing I love about Velocity is that you can take the pieces that you want to use. If you just want to use the submission platform, um, you absolutely can. If you want to then move through all the other um, steps and stages, you can. We're here to help you figure out the easy, fast ways to move through all those stages. So let's dig in a document. The first um, kind of overriding theme I want to talk about is this idea of, of being smart and using the systems in a smart way, including uh, the smart documents. So Marcy, tell us a little bit about that, that first piece. So tell us about, you know, are you using the smart documents? Are you using things like the dis document descriptors? What are some of the ways that you're finding some efficiency in, you know, how you're using the documents and sending out the request to clients or how your, your staff person is? Yeah. So I could be smarter. Um, <laughs> and I learned some things just planning for this call with you guys, but my process is the, I don't, I do not look at a file without all the documents up front anymore. Um, it's just, that's the way it goes. So I have a process where we have a, usually it's a phone conversation. Sometimes it's an email and they get a link. And my concept is get yourself into my system via this link, this application link. And once I have you in my system, I will send you a secure uh, link so that you can upload the documents I need so I can properly review and give you my opinion. Okay, I love so, this. But your step one is you're, yeah. you're sending the Velocity link, the application link, as soon as you get an application back, you are reviewing it or, or the person working with you is reviewing it. And then you're creating your document list and sending it your document, document yeah. request. Okay, interesting, okay. And that takes me like five minutes. I had one yesterday, I had a call with her. It's a refinance equity takeout. She sent me the application literally within half an hour. I quickly opened it within five minutes. She had a list of documents that I needed. And then I use, I send a second email with an e-sign and I ask them to sign my client consent form. And it says right in the document list, you're also getting another email that says your mortgage broker wants your signature. Once I have the documents and your signature, we're off to the races. Nice. So you're setting up those expectations. You're explaining to your clients early in the, in the beginning stages. I'm going to give you mortgage advice. I'm going to provide mortgage advice when I have your application, I have your signed credit consent, and I have the documents that I requested through the system. Uh, one thing I think is really important in the smart ways of positioning the portal. If we don't position the portal to our clients, how do they know what to expect? So I'm really focused uh, in the last month on changing my language, uh, really my sales language and my conversations with my clients. I'm focused on changing some of my email language to be really clear that this document portal um, exists. It's safe. It's secure. It's easy to use. When they click on the upload button, um, you know they're going to see all the documents that they need, um, all those kinds of things. So I think there's a smart way to position the entire system, particularly the upload button. Um, Denise, tell us a little bit about how you're using. Are you doing much of the smart conditions or setting those up? And how are you how are you kind of positioning this to your clients and encouraging them to use the portal versus being inundated with emails like we all have been in the past with documents? 
Yeah. So like JPEGs and different things are a thing of the past, right? Like I can't handle having to change everything or merge things. Um, that is one of the reasons why we originally adopted like velocity so fast for the documents. Um, it is always for the client. This makes it easy and safe. Um, you know, I care about your privacy and I never want you to email me something with your social insurance number on it that could be intercepted. Like I don't ever want a breach in security. I don't ever want to have to email all my clients and tell them there was a breach in security. I care about your safety. And um, lucky for us, we have the Velocity people to worry about how that all works behind the scenes. I just get to position it to the client that way. Um, really, it's easier for us. Getting PDFs the way we want them, organized the way we want them um, in the right folders is way easier for us. But Positioning it to the client, I care. I want to make this easy for you. You can do this from your cell phone. You can drag and drop from anything. Um, one of the things I love is if it's, say, an older client who needs help with technology, can I CC your kid so that they can help you? Um, can I forward this or CCC your um, accountant so that they can just upload your T1 generals? Um, doing these things for the client, it makes it easier for them. It makes it faster for you and it positions you as an expert in how you're going to help them. Okay. I love that. We need to go back to what you just said, because that's such a good tip. I have not thought of this until you brought this up last week. So you have a, you have maybe parents who are co-signing or you have, let's, you know, there's, there's someone else on the app who's not your main point of contact, or you're saying that if the client says, well, I have an accountant and they will send you the T1 gens and the NOAs, you kind of go, okay, that's great. Would it, would it be okay if I CC your mom or dad to, you know, if they're maybe providing a gift letter, would it be okay to CC the accountant and ask for the items I need? So you're going direct to the source of the parents who are, you know, doing the gift letter or the accountant. That is completely new to me. I've been trialing it this week after you've told me this and it is unreal because you guys, when you send the link to someone's accountant, remember that any of the previously uploaded documents are locked. The accountant is not able to view the client's other documents, but they can literally click the upload and they can upload the T1 gens and the NOAs right to your client's Velocity account. So the accountant idea, I love that idea. I had not, not thought of that. Um, how are you guys using, you know, I love the little detail descriptors. How are you using the detail descriptors and how, how you know, in depth do you get in your descriptors? Or is that something you're thinking about doing? Or are you already doing that for the little descriptors? I love the descriptor. So how is that going for you, Marcy? Yeah, I have, I, I kind of do it a little old school. I know that I can do smarter conditions. I have to update mine. Mine still populate with stuff I put in there in 2017. So I tend to open a Word document and I have pre-scripted things that I cut and paste into those boxes. It, like I said, it's very, very quick. Yeah. I do have some smart conditions. I'm motivated now, Julie. I promised in August I'm going to get them all set up and be the game changer. It's sort of, you know, yeah. I, I did it the other day. I did a cleanup of mine. But you know, everyone who's listening, you know, I'm constantly saying everything about velocity is a work in progress. So you might set up something and then two months later, you might go, I need to make a little tiny tweak or I need to add something. And I set aside time um, every week to make little ads. And once a month, I set aside around two hours to make my big changes. And I let them build up. And, and I just did um, my, my smart conditions changes. And it's super helpful to set aside that time. And then any time we've had a challenge with the document, we have been um, careful to add, you know, add the, the smart conditions. So that really helps. Um, so you're getting detailed. Denise, are you, are you digging into... To, to detail on those descriptors and, and do you find, are you getting the right documents when you send a request? Like, how is that going? Yeah, super detailed. I don't want to type that stuff out more than once, right? So a, you know, letter of employment means it's a, a one sentence that says this, this, and this, um, and really adjusting them. So I don't have to change them every year. Uh, I know when I set it up originally, I was like, I need 2017 and 2016 T4s. And so now it says two most recent years of T4s, like just so that I don't have to keep redoing it. Um, I like that I can still manually put stuff in on the fly so that I can manually type in, oh, I only need this for your husband or whatever it is. Um, but that those are already there. We send out a lot um, using the client experience so that those are already there for descriptors. And I just have to go through and delete the conditions I don't want. Okay, let's go through that. Them. Let's tell people about that because I think people don't realize what you're saying. So walk me through your client experience process in which you're saying, 
you have them all added and then, then, so you, how does that work? So if I go into client experience and I go into add a client experience, because I want to send somebody an application um, and a list of documents in their portal that I want, it's set up so that I have all of the documents I would ever ask anybody for there. And I just can quickly delete. So if they're not self-employed, maybe I don't need business financials and um, articles of incorporation. I just delete what I don't need. I don't need a separation agreement for these people and hit send. Um, and they get that list, they get all the descriptors. It takes me like 15 seconds to send that. That's um, cool. So in your settings, in your client experience settings, you have actually laundry listed. You have, you have just done a list of everything you could possibly want so that when you click new client experience, you see all of the documents you want, you've created all of the descriptors and you simply X out and delete the items you don't need for that client versus thinking about what am I adding? What am I, you know, going through the list, searching the drop down. So that's a really reverse, that's almost a reverse hack, Sarah. That's the reverse use. I love that. Um, so, so, and then um, I BCC my assistant. So then she can just forward that again in a couple of days if we don't get everything. Hey, did you have any questions about this? Great. That's really cool. Yeah. And now, um, was it, was it you, Marcy, who you had, one of you had this great tip on, you know, you, you send out the document request and you get crickets, nothing happened. You get nothing, right? You have, don't hear from the client. Um, you have, one of you had this great idea that you just simply, because you sent the document request in Velocity, you go into the communication history and you literally just click resend. Yeah. You can add a little warm note if you want to, or you could add a timeline reminder. So one of the things we do, and, and here's my rule on what the what the body of the email looks like in our document collection. It's always a warm opener. It is always a timeline set for this is the timeline that we need the documents below received by. It's a little bit of a why and that's all that's all just saved. It's all just sort of templated that we grab in. So we're setting timelines, you know, why we need it because we need to send it on to a lender. They're going to need two to three business days to review the items. So this is why this is our timeline and then a warm closer. And that way, if we need to resend, when we when we open the communication history and we hit resend, we just add another little line that says, you know, we're touching base again. We touched base two days ago. It's very important that you read the email and you provide the following documents just to set some timelines because we know clients get busy and distracted and they have things going on. So um, I like setting timelines for sure in, um, in there. It, I think it's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, quickly because we had a question how to do the BCC and I think we should I should just quickly show that so when you guys end up being experienced um, and what Denise was speaking about is that on your profile page in Velocity down here you have the ability to do your default client experience so you can have um, the, your default bodied message here mm -hmm exactly what you're saying to them you can have attachments uploaded and then what denise was saying is that she has all of her conditions here really really built out with all of her notes so that when she goes and sends client experience you go add client experience right i've got someone uh, giving me a call i'm going to send this out to them and invite them to fill out my application and send me documents i've got my entire list here pre-built with my notes mm -hmm way faster for me to just go, oh, you know, they're not business for self, garbage can. I don't need that. As opposed to adding, okay, business for self, and then, you know, either copying and pasting or having to retype the notes every time. So uh, what did you call it? Reverse, Julia? It's, reverse, it's like a reverse hack. It's so hack. interesting to me. Add it all in and delete it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that way of, of saying it. Yeah, so that's what it is. Okay, and Denise, you mentioned, you mentioned a BCC though. Let's so that's it. when um, when we're sending documents. So say uh, uh, the way Marcia says, like she does an application. So sometimes people send us an application first and then we're sending the portal of what we want. Then I can BCC okay. my assistant um, or I can CC their accountant, their daughter, their whoever to help. Yeah. Them. So let's be really clear. In client, when you're sending a brand new client experience, everyone, there is no BCC in the brand new client experience. Uh, Denise is referencing when she's sending a document request from conditions and documents, the, the CC and the BCC buttons, the little plus signs drop down and open. So we use those as well. And let's say that my client care manager is sending the document request. Here's a cool tip if you're on a team. So on her first request, I don't get CC'd or BCC'd. 
if she has to request the same documents for a second time and she hasn't received those documents on her first request, I get BCC'd. I then am alerted when I see a document request and I'm BCC'd, I know she's having a bit of struggle getting the items that she wants. And I, at that stage, can choose to jump in. But what's really cool is the client can't see my email because I'm BCC'd. I don't want them to know I'm involved. I just want to be watching. Isn't that cool? If you're working with staff um, or in a team, I really like that. So I think that to, a lot of people don't realize you just click the CC or the BCC um, works, works really well for sure. Okay, so let's do a quick review, Sarah. So getting really detailed with your document descriptors is really wise. Um, focusing in on um, the smart conditions where you can actually build out all those descriptors and taking the time to set that up is very, very helpful. The idea that you can CC or BCC someone, the CC could be mom and dad doing the gift. It could be an accountant asking for documents. The BCC could be your um, underwriter, or it could be you if that's in reverse order. Uh, the other idea is um, like Denise is doing, having your entire list of documents and then deleting what you don't want. And also the idea that you can resend the identical request by even just, you don't even need to add in any new information. You could just hit resend or you could add a little, little warm opener as well or a little, little bit of chit chat, right? Yeah, Julie, we have a quick question here. I think it's worth addressing. Sure. Um, for easy and away, people, anyone using Snap or easy and away, which of course, guys, we have for free through Velocity until September 30th and then to be continued as a added on purchase package. How do you work that into the process? I.e., are you letting the client know about that right in the original client experience or how do you go about that marcy are you using the the uh, NOA services yeah i know um we'll so i'll sometimes mention it so in the blurb where i'm asking you, you i tend to get a sense you kind of get a sense early with people are they going to be those people that have everything mm -hmm. or are we is it a struggle? So sometimes in my blurb, I have, I copy and paste and I'll take it out, but it'll say, if you don't have these tax documents, let, let me know right away. And we're going to send you a link to authorize and we can get all that stuff for you. And we've been using that a ton. The easy NOA thing is my new favorite thing. Nice. Yeah. Um, and I think I saw a sneak peek that it's going to get cooler and cooler coming in these next editions down the road with velocity rate right? that there'll be a way for a client to click a box or something that's right we're, we're making constant improvements to to that section sarah do you want to tell us a little bit about the extension of the easy in a way and step in a way and what's kind of happening there yeah thanks so uh, basically as of august 1st guys we've had this promotion on for about 15 months where we've had free e-sign easy trying access and opta property validation reports um so that promotion is all, as all good things must coming to an end. Um, but in its place, we are, of course, introducing the ability to uh, purchase these as individual um, add-ons. If you want just ESAN credits, you can purchase those and you can share them with someone else in your office. Or you want just bank account statement access, you can go for easy account access. Also some exciting updates coming there with 12 months instead of three. And uh, as well with the, with the NOA free services, as I said, they're extended on until September 30th. Following that, they will be part of what we're calling an enhanced bundle that is basically available for, for purchase for about $89 a month, um, and that's a, a one-year contract, and that's going to give you, it's for the higher volume, but it's going to give you a high volume of, of all of those credits, including NOA, ESI, and all that, okay? So that's what we're going to have coming out shortly. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, I mean, we're all so grateful that a lot of those add-ons have been have been free to us, but there was a reality that there was a cost for those add-ons um, to Velocity. There's a real cost, and it's been many, 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 many months of us offering these amazing promos. Um, and now I think the new offering and the bundling is really fantastic. I looked at the cost, and I know it's exceptionally good compared to going to the marketplace and purchasing each of these pieces separately or just ordering the NOA separately. So there's definitely a really good cost savings with the bundle that, that's coming out. So thanks for that, Sarah. Um, let's move on to the idea of, so we sort of talked about all the things around this, the system and smart. Let's talk about the security. Uh, I think this is one of my favorite parts of, of Velocity and the conditions and documents is this idea that we're offering our clients something that's safe and secure and encrypted. Um, so Denise, you had a really interesting way, a nice way of phrasing it. 
And you had you you had this great line and tell us about it where you're kind of putting in a little dig maybe to the client's home bank branch, which we, we all love. We all love that. So tell us how you position the security of the conditions and documents. Well, I just always position it as I really care about um, their personal documents. So I, I would never email somebody my documents without um, a secure, like secure password or something when it's like, this is all your details. This is your social insurance number and birthday. Like that is worth a lot of money on the black market. So I want to use a secure system for them to transfer that to me. Um, I can't imagine anybody doing anything other than that. Um, how many of the banks actually use a secure system? Anybody know? I don't think any of the bank, the, 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 the right. The it's all, it's all email. And so that's where, like, when you start asking these questions, especially to the very detailed um, clients, they start worrying about, okay, yeah, where is my document going? Like how accessible is it to people? Um, right. It's, it's quite scary. Right. So, I mean, position yourself as an expert and, and carry it as such. Right. But, right. Marcy, do you ever, so I love that. So you're, so just before I move on, you're, so Denise, you're really, um, you're really kind of adding that little element of how secure would it be if you were talking to your bank branch rep and you're just emailing things, you know, if you have Gmail and they have email and they're working at home and you're at home. Um, so you're really adding in that little piece. And I think giving the clients the, the experience of we are professionals, we are experts, we are focused on safety and security because there's a lot of times where we're competing against maybe a bank mortgage specialist and we're positioning ourselves in a way where maybe they're new to using, working with a mortgage broker or a mortgage agent. So I think that, um, and no, remember, no one needs to say, I use Velocity. You need to say, I have a fantastic system I have a fantastic system mm -hmm. that is safe, secure, encrypted, and it's the best way for you to send me your details. Uh, Marcy, do you have any pushback? If, do you find with the portal, have you found it really easy to convince clients to use it? And any tips on just kind of how you explain what's going to happen to them? With yeah, I, I have now not had any pushback. I use languaging like my secure portal, your secure place for your documents right from the first conversation. Funny story, I have a client who's a good friend of mine who is also an accountant with one of the big accounting firms. And we did a mortgage on an investment property that they purchased. And so they used Velocity throughout the process. On their principal residence, they have a CIVC mortgage and they had to make some changes and do some stuff with that that I advised them, no, you gotta stick with CIVC for a variety of reasons. So she said to her CIVC branch person, do you have Velocity? <laughs> So her and I were out kayaking one night. She's telling me the story and I'm just cracking up because she's like, well, my mortgage broker for that other mortgage, we did this whole thing and she's an accountant. And I'm like, that is just the funniest thing ever. And this bankruptcy, like, what's velocity? I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, that is a class. That's a classic story. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a similar, a similar experience with somebody who also did that. And it was the same thing. They, they asked RBC if they said to RBC, you know, I'm really not comfortable emailing you. And my mortgage broker has a way that I can securely provide her with documents. So you should have that. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're right. Clients, once they're, once they're, once they start to think about it, I think it's that, that it's, I think it's our holdback. I think we mm -hmm. as mortgage agents get worried about um, so this idea of a new system or this idea of we're asking them to click an upload button. But let's think about everything else that's happening on these, on our phones, mm -hmm. all the ways that we are in other areas of our life securely uploading um, documents. Think about Airbnb, okay? I just rented an Airbnb. Everything happened on this phone mm -hmm. and everything, including all the documentation and the receipting and entering your visa is all happening in an app. So I think sometimes we have to get over ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to go, you know, when I'm talking to people who feel stressed about using the conditions and documents or I think email is working great. I hear that a lot. I'm like, okay, but our clients are actually much more savvy than we maybe give them credit for sometimes, right? I, I find if you're working with young clients too, like they're doing everything on their phone. Uh, yeah. Text is so insecure or WhatsApp and that's how they want to send you documents that you can send right. so easily from your phone on the portal is, is really a selling feature for them. Ooh, that's a good point. So that they're, they're in that age category where they're literally on their phone or they're taking a photo of their pay stub and they kind of want to text it to you, but you've already positioned the upload button is the safe and secure way. So I think that's really great. In terms of security, I think I use the system. May, I, don't, I don't think either of you use it for long-term permanent document storage. You have some other facilities. You use it as you're working on your file. 
but I'm definitely using Velocity for absolutely all and our only document storage facility. So I do not have a secondary storage facility anymore. Um, I know that uh, Velocity has put an incredible amount of work and effort into making sure that we can upload and store as many documents as we want. There is essentially no limit to the amount of document storage available to each individual user. And we now have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of files where we're also doing compliance. And if you if compliance can be an option, that's really gonna depend uh, on the brand you're with. I'm with DLC, so that works for us. Um, MA and MCC um, have a little bit different sometimes processes around compliance, but we can certainly use Velocity and the documents for, um, for compliance. You can also, this is a little tip, if you do compliance elsewhere, you can click complete compliance in Velocity. It creates the most gorgeous PDF. You can reorder the documents. You can add a cover sheet. So we add our cover sheet as a document and you can reorder it. So the cover sheet is first and the documents are in the order that your compliance department wants. And you can hit save and then you can download that PDF to possibly upload to whatever system you're using for your final compliance. So if you want to do it that way, um, you sure can. So that's just another idea on long-term storage. Again, these are preferences. Mm -hmm. You know, you may or may not want to do that, but if you do, it works really well for, for both of those. So mm -hmm. I wanted to um, I want to jump into the idea that the system in some ways, I find it, it's very simple and it's very powerful. And I think that our clients like things that are simple and straightforward and easy to understand. So in terms of what the clients visually see on the portal, when they click the upload button, tell us a bit about that, Marcy, about what the clients see. And do you, do you get feedback on that? What, what do people you think know, about when they click and upload? I can tell it's easy because it's so fast how quickly I often will get things. Um, so, and the other thing is that working with Jen, who's not in my office, she can see what I've asked for. She can see what I missed because I always forget something. So if I've sent the list, she's like, hey, you forgot to ask for the boy check and you forgot to ask for the home insurance on a Scotia instant funding or whatever. And so then I can see that she's just sent that list because, and I use it actually to, we talked about CCing and I use it to introduce Jen into the process as well. So I'll CC her and say, also, FYI, Jen, my assistant is now added in on this. Going forward, please include her on everything. And this is who she is. And this is what she's going to be doing. Oh, that's great. So, um, right. So you use that as that intro, that warm intro to her as a, positioning her as your essentially document yeah. expert, getting her involved at that stage. And whenever we're doing anything different or new with Velocity, we have a fake a dummy file set up in there and we send each other. So this morning we were messing around with some stuff with MPP and our process with that. And so like, I encourage people, send yourself a document list and see what it looks like. It's yeah. so easy, it's so smooth. You don't get questions back because it's That's like, right. oh, okay, click, got it. Yeah, uh, we, Sarah and I both encourage everyone to have, um, I call them the Mickey Mouse account or the, the, you know, the Minnie Mouse account, have a pretend account, have a silly name, it's your, it's your application to play around with in practice. I have my Minnie Mouse account attached as me, as Minnie Mouse, it goes to my Gmail, my personal Gmail. So when I'm feeling, if yeah. you feel any nervousness or any worry about sending a document request, all you need to do is go to your Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse account and send yourself an example. So send yourself what you want to send the client. Then open the email in your in your personal email. It could be your work email as well, but I like the entire experience of opening it in a different mail mail uh, you know system. And then you this is what you see. So it's shocking to me how many people are using Velocity have not actually clicked the upload button themselves. When you click the upload button as a client, this is the visual. Uh, what you don't see right now is if. So there's a little tiny house, but Sarah, for what we see is we see our brokerage name up there. So it will say for me, DLC Elevation Mortgage. So it's customized to me. And all of the text right here is already, is already added and created. You don't need to reinvent this. I really love the text here. I really love that it's saying it's not mandatory to upload everything at once. You can always return. I really love how, do you see that the sign commitment is blue and the rest of the items have the little um, uh, little symbol and it's red. It's telling people 
um, what they've sent us and what we need. And this great little status bar moves across. So the client is at 33% completion. And as they complete all the items requested, it will move across. So if you have not had the experience of being your own, own client, I really, really encourage you to do that either on your phone or on your laptop and maybe try both and do some practice uploads. Um, on your profile page, actually, guys, um, is where you can customize this too. If you have different texts you want to add in here, um, and you can add your logo, and you can also choose your theme um, and everything there. I did want to take a second to reflect back on the SMS because I think that's a great point that you know a lot of the younger people want to do it all on their phone. So one thing that we've recently introduced is that you can actually send this client portal via SMS. So instead of going to send requests through uh, conditions, or sorry, email, I'll do it as an SMS. And that allows me, once I've configured my Twilio, to actually text that through to my client. And they'll be able to just click on that link and do all the uploading from their phone. If they want to upload from the camera roll or take photos there, um, then that's something that is we totally have adapted towards. And to that point, in order to enable this, you just have to go on your settings page. And right here, Twilio, it'll offer to connect. Just go ahead and connect, follow the steps, and you're good to go with starting to send out texts from Velocity. Sarah, you just taught me something new. I did not know that. It's, and we're so glad you're on this call, Sarah. That is amazing. So, you know, I'm not a big, I'm not a big texture in my business, but what's so important is Velocity is not just designed for me or anyone else. It's designed for all of us. So for some people, they love email. For some people, they love texting. Um, the SMS texting is nice because again, you're not using your personal phone or your, your phone number, nor is your assistant or your underwriter or client care manager. You're using the phone number that you set up with Twilio. And um, it's not designed for chit chat back and forth. It's designed for you to alert the client, for you to say, um, here's the upload button. So to Denise's point, if they receive a text, they are still clicking the upload button. They are not texting back photos. They are clicking the upload button and the, the details are dropping into velocity. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of go through on the part of, of sort of simplicity is that um, when I'm thinking about my, even myself, whether you work alone, so whether you're a sole agent, whether you're working with uh, one person or two people or a team of underwriters as some, some people on this call are, there is so much simplicity. You know, you ever have the moment where you wake up in the night and you're pretty convinced that you forgot a really important document and you need to release conditions in the morning or you just have that panic moment. Am I done? Am I, am I on the way to broker complete, file complete? Um, I find it so reassuring to be able to go into the conditions and documents and we we're very, very focused on checking off the check boxes. Right, so using the check boxes, and if the lender has confirmed that they like and accept the document, we are always using that last last check box in the list and checking that off. And then that we know for sure that that condition is met. We we you know if we're looking at a portal or we're e reading an email update from a lender, we're really really all of us know we have to make sure that we're checking off that final box so that when um, when it gets to the point where the application is broker complete, you can see it very very concisely when you look down the list. You see right here all of those uh, all of those are checked off, and you know that you're complete. A little suggestion, don't leave conditions in your list that aren't needed. So if there's a condition in your list that you realize at some point, I don't actually need to send that to the lender to get to broker complete. I definitely advise removing that as a condition, right? Archiving it if you want to. It drops to the bottom of your list. So the top of your list is only items that are required by the lender and you can really clearly run down the list and see what the lender has accepted. Some people say to me, I think that's a little bit more work. And I say, but how else will we keep track with when you have lots of files on the go and you have lots of different lender portals and lender emails coming in? It's just a really easy way um, to, to make sure that you're organized on your um, what, what's been accepted, right? Yeah. Um, so um, yeah. We quickly touch on the um, legend up here, I like to call it, because people kind of question what, what these symbols do. Uh, so just to let you know, this little green, this little box will light up green when documents are received through the portal. Okay, and the paperclip, which used to be here, we moved now over to here to make room for um, all this other stuff that we have going on. And the little, this little guy, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Requested. The, the box is requested. The top arrow, arrow going up, you can see here means received. And then this little check mark, we get asked about this. What does this do? It's confirmed. So that's basically once you've confirmed that you've received the correct document from the client, you can go ahead and just check that off. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to shut down that condition from the portal so that they can no longer go and upload any um, excessive documents there. Okay. When they do upload them immediately, they are uh, locked down. So they are secure, but this is just going to prevent them from uploading anything else to confuse matters. The next one is sent. Now that's typically used when you've sent to the lender, just to note to yourself or any partners that's been sent. And the last one is the approved. And that's basically saying, as Julie mentioned, that it's been approved by the lender. Okay, I can keep track of what's been approved and the date that it's been approved will actually show up here too. Yeah, so visually you have such a nice one column of everything that's been approved by the lender. It's just to comment on the confirmed checkbox. Let's be, let's be ca careful on something on that. If you, you've decided as the agent that you like the document and you've checked that it's confirmed, if for some reason you need to go back and you need to ask for it maybe it's a little bit blurry and you thought it was acceptable, but the lender wants you to go back. You need to make sure that you go back and that you unclick click that checkbox and that you can then re-ask for that document so the client can upload a better version or, or the right version or a less blurry version. That happened to me a couple of weeks ago and I couldn't figure out why they couldn't upload it when I was asking. It's because I had it continue to have it checked as confirmed, but it wasn't confirmed. It wasn't actually good enough. So get used to the uh, legend up there at the top and familiar, familiarize yourself with it and it, it's, it's super helpful. Um, let's, let, so let's, um, let's go back to this idea, um, of simple and, uh, Denise, I want you to just give me, give me some of the kind of feedback from your clients. Are people, are people feeling like it's simple? You know, are you getting a lot of questions? Are you getting no questions? And, and how much is this person speeding up your document collection? Would you say? So I would say everybody feels like it's simple. I, I very rarely have anybody push back on it. Um, and part of the reason why it's so simple is that it, it changes everything to a PDF for you. Um, for clients, that was so hard to explain to them how to scan a document on their phone by going into notes and doing all this stuff when they can just upload whatever they have and it will fix it for them. Um, so I find that's like a really valuable feature because people just take pictures. Um, that's how we work now, like on a mobile phone with a picture of your letter of employment. Nobody has a scanner. They're not going home to scan it to a PDF for you. Um, and they don't work in PDFs, so they don't know how to convert things. I, I agree. You know, and it's just, yeah, it's just the photo. The photo element is just so easy and, and people want it to be easy. They want it to feel simple. And we live in a world of PDFs and a lot of us have, you know, whatever it is, preview on Mac or Adobe or all these things, but our clients don't always have that. Particularly, you know, I had a client who is a plumber who doesn't even have a laptop for anything work-related and he has a personal laptop and he, this was a couple of years ago and he said like, I don't, I don't even understand what you're talking about when you're saying PDF, you know, he was used to Word docs and photos. So I think, yeah, we're making it, we're definitely making it a lot more simple for sure. Uh, Marcy, any other comments on just uh, this kind of section around how it, how it's simple or the portal or, you know, any, any kind of uh, tips for us on this area? No, I would just say it's really great when there are two of you working on the same file. So if I have looked at documents, I will tick them off confirmed. Or if I go in there and I have noticed that Jen is, looked at everything. We have a system where we, we actually pull it out of Velocity and save it in, in another spot because of our compliance with our um, head office. But if she hasn't taken it or she hasn't ticked it off as approved or confirmed, she'll pin a note at the top. So as soon as I open the application, there might be a note on there, missing May RSP, have June, have you know April. So then I know if I'm happening to be talking with the client, oh, hey, by the way, you forgot to upload whatever. So we use the pinned notes a lot to help us understand what each of us are doing in the document section. Oh, I love that. So you do not need to be getting a bunch of emails or calls to each other or texts to each other. She's, you know, either one of you or she's going in there and she's adding the pin note. You know, these are the items that are missing. We're using the pin notes to communicate as well. 
Uh, we do a morning regroup in Velocity. So I, I look at all my leads and my pre-approvals and our client care manager looks at everything um, that's new deals and submitted on. And we're taking a really quick look at maybe the top 15 applications that are kind of in play uh, every single day. And we're making sure that we're looking at the, you know, the pin notes. You don't even need to make sure. You open the app and the pin notes pop up at you. We keep our notes section at the very top of Velocity. So this is where I'm definitely encouraging the use of the modern view. Uh, classics, okay, but it's not as good as modern. I know some people like it, but I would say break that habit, get into modern. And we, you can reorder, if anyone doesn't know this, you can reorder all of these sections and we keep our notes at the top so that as soon as you open an application, the pinned note turns green and it pops above the note section. It's literally impossible to miss. Um, I see a question about unlocking bank statements. So we do need to be careful that if a client is uploading locked statements that actually have a pin, uh, obviously Velocity, you know, it's really good, you guys. It's not magic. You definitely are not, Velocity doesn't have the ability to unlock a locked document. So I have two suggestions here on that. Uh, one of them is in your verbal conversation, when you first start talking to your lead and you're working through your, your approval, please, please mention to your client, any document you upload, you need to remove password protection because of course I won't be able to open it. So you wanna mention that. Another suggestion in your signature, so in your, either in the context of asking for documents or for some people they've added it to the signature, their actual signature and velocity. And they've added a little, little note that says that I'm not able, obviously not able to open, um, you know, secure password protected documents. Please use the password to, to remove that or, or give, provide me with the password, right? So that's a good, Glenn, Glenn asked that. That's a really good question. We appreciate that question, Glenn. Yeah, yeah Julie, I'm showing uh, Sandra's email signature from before. So this is a right. back tying into a couple sessions ago, guys. Uh, we had Sandra show us her email signature that she uses and we did have someone ask, how do I get my clients to use the portal more? Why not make this your email signature to explain, you know, right off the bat, in all your emails automatically, why you use the portal, as well as why they don't need to have those documents locked. Right, so Sandra has her name, her company, her, her, her email, her phone number, all of her contact details, and below those details, she has this little message. Other people have different messages. I have a question here that says, um, you, Sarah, you mentioned that, why do I sometimes get a notification that I received a new document, or why sometimes do I only get the nightly reminder? Uh, that's because if you add this little section, you put a line to the client saying, um, when they click send document, you receive an immediate notification. So we have a little line in our client care email signature that says, when you upload a document, please click the word send and we will immediately receive notification that you've provided us with that document. And we have the word send in bold. So you could add both of those little pieces, particularly if you're working on a team and you have a specific person doing your document collection, okay? Um, so those are all really good tips. So let's just go back through simplicity. I mean, again, I think it's that the portal clearly states what the client needs in blue, what they've sent in red, what's missing, the percentage complete, the document descriptors are there for every single client. You can attach a PDF for a client. This is a cool idea that I heard this morning. There's a person that I know who attaches an example T1 Gen. Isn't that neat? They actually attach it. So you can have these things attached if you want to say, here's an example of what a T1 Gen looks like. We know how hard it is to get all pages of T1 Gens. I swear, everyone sends a summary, right? So you can attach documents if you want to send them out as well. And um, I do really like in terms of simplicity that um, there's no searching for sent emails. It's all in communication history for your resends. There's no searching uh, in a panic, the portal or the last known update from the lender. Uh, you can see if you're keeping track in Velocity and you've checked off which documents are accepted, it's an instant look. And that panic moment you have when you think, oh my gosh, am I missing something? Am I broker complete? Time is ticking. You can quickly review and see, see what you have. Um, any other comments around this idea of just trying to make this as simple as possible, Sarah? No, I think we're looking good. I'm, I'm, firing back and forth between the chat and the q and I think I've got it all under control. Great. Um, any, is there any other questions that you want us to get to? Um, to address 
No, no, I'm good. Okay, yeah. questions are good. Um, so I have a kind of overriding question for both both of you ladies. Um, is there a way, and this is really hard, is there a way to kind of think about how much efficiency, can you describe, I guess, how velocity overall, particularly, I feel like this section of velocity, or whether that's the notes or the tasks or all the other great features like workflows, how do, would you define how much efficiency this has added to your business, Marcy? How would you, how would you explain that to someone who's never used it before? Yeah. It's, it's huge. I mean, I think back to how long it used to take me just to comprise like an email of all the things I wanted. I had this really long email template and then I would take out what I didn't want and, and then the garbage emails that would come and documents locked and I, it's so quick and cut and paste. And like I said, yesterday, I had about a half an hour and then I had to race out of here. And I was like, bam, 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 three lists out to three new applications done. So it's probably cut it in half what I would, would require or more. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Denise, how about you? What are you finding? Like, if you're just talking to someone oh. who's an agent has never used this before, how would you define the increase in efficiency? I would argue that a lot of the times when we're dealing with new clients, the speed at which we get to them is what determines whether they want to work with you or not. Um, and when I can send them the client experience, here's your application, here's all the documents you need upfront. We can still do a phone call. I can talk to you, but often you can have all the things you already have ready to me. So I can do a full pre-approval in the time that we could go back and forth booking a phone call. Um, so it really is super efficient. Uh, the other piece that's really huge for us in terms of document or, um, collection is that um, before, if a client was emailing me stuff um, and I have team members who would be the people reviewing those and they have to wait for me to get down my email list to forward that to them to then look at uh, with Velocity, everybody can see what's there. Everybody can look at it. Everybody can assess it right away. So it's um, much faster when we're working on a team because, uh, and it's not limited to whoever's going to get in my email. If I'm off, somebody can still look at it. Yeah. So you're not, you're not at the mercy of how fast can I forward it? Did I forward it? Did I forget to forward it? Did the, you know, did the forward not send for us? It's also, we all work at home in different, actually three different small centers, three different cities. So for us, it's, I always think, you know, if someone's sick or away for the day and they, yes, they have email that I can access, but it's pretty fussy for me to log into my underwriter's email or log into my client care manager's email when we're all using Velocity together, we are literally in the mornings in our morning review, we're all in one screen for the dashboard. You all know how much I love the dashboard. And I think it adds so much value to your business to use your dashboard to be really organized. And we're all seeing the same application. I work with a partner as well. There's times where maybe I have an urgent issue and he needs to jump into an application there's, you know, there's no worry about him having to go to my email to see, oh, did we just get this important document because it's all in velocity. So uh, on a team, I think it's really helpful. It certainly makes the inbox in your email focused on sales. So I find a lot of efficiency, all the things you've said, but, but as well, I find when I'm focused on generating business, focusing on leads, focusing on referral partners, my inbox becomes a place that leads, leads appear because I'm receiving introductions or I'm working on my leads and, um, or I'm talking to referral partners or realtors or financial planners. And it sort of becomes, my inbox has become a business generator versus a tool that I use to complete mortgage applications. And that's been a really big change for me. And it's been one for, I guess, the sales side of my brain that I find great because I'm not bogged down with all the document emails in my inbox and really just focused on generating business. So um, I think that's just an interesting idea on how, how we sort of the mindset of our day. I used to find my inbox, ter it was terrorizing because it was full, <laughs> full of all these, you know, document, documents, documents, documents that need to go forward here, forward there, open review. Um, so I love that about the system for sure. Um, yeah, and we have a, a couple other, a la one last suggestion on simple is that um, you can certainly uh, email if you have an, a lender that accepts documents via email. So let's say you have Scotia BRM wants documents via email, 
we make sure that any outbound email regarding documents leaves from Velocity. So the Scotiabank VRM, the emails leave from Velocity every single time. So we can see a record of that. We are actually moving, we were using the FirstNet portal. We're actually moving more towards emailing FirstNet documents because I wanna see the send and I wanna see the documents that were sent in Velocity in the client's application. So if you're sending anything by email, you can send them out. If you're uploading, it's not here yet. I'm not making any promises on timelines, but it is coming in the future. We have many lenders who are very interested, who are portal-based lenders, who are very keen to figure out the ways that their portals can actually be accessible inside of the client's application. What you're seeing lately, and I'm seeing it with MCAP in particular, you're starting to see your actual MCAP conditions list appear in Velocity under conditions and docs. It's the actual list generated from MCAP. We are in the beginning stages of making those connections so that ultimately the M things like the MCAP portal will exist inside of your client's Velocity application. So there is no more download to upload. It will be more of a drop and drop drag and drop feature. So you can see by those lists being generated, we're hard at work on making those connections. Um, so I think that's a really, that's coming, coming. I'm not making any timeline promises, Sarah. That's coming uh, and it's a focus that we have for sure. Awesome. Well, we, Sarah, we have about three minutes. I think we'll get, we'll get a little bit close to wrapping up here. Uh, I cannot thank you ladies enough Marcy and Denise, uh, what, these are such great ideas. And uh, I, love, I love all the ways that you're thinking about different little ways of using the system, making your lives easier, making your client experience better and making sure that we're being more efficient, we're increasing production, we're decreasing staff time. If we have extra staff time, let's have it focused on generating new business. Um, so I cannot thank you enough for being our guest today. Uh, I think that it was a really great session, Sarah. We want to thank Sarah, as always, she keeps us on track. She helps us with all the visuals and the takeaways. Sarah's recording the session. You can always find our recordings under the Velocity training page under the advanced tab and the recordings of previous sessions are there. And I'll remind everyone, the, this, this is our training page. This, this is page is a lifesaver. Sarah is the mastermind literally behind this entire page and all of this video content. And it's incredible. So if you're stuck or frustrated in Velocity, the first place to go is to click the little question mark at the bottom right corner when you're in Velocity. It pops you into this training page and you can search through getting started, intermediate, advanced, and for anything you're looking for. We had questions today on smart conditions and custom conditions. Um, and if you, uh, if you wanna look for the other masterclass sessions there at the very bottom. And Sarah, we always want to thank um, Jeff Willis and Kevin Deere, the original inventors of Velocity. Uh, these fellows have put their time, their energy, and their investment for many, many, many years into what we see now is this extraordinary system. We're always grateful they give us the opportunity to share ideas in Masterclass. And I hope that was a helpful session for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much. I posted the link to the Masterclass homepage in the uh, chat as well as some other links to things that we referred to that is a great place to go and get all your training needs thank you so so much to marcy and denise they really have given us many little tidbits and takeaways i think today that are really going to help you guys improve your process awesome thanks everyone thank, thank you guys have a great day thank happy you. long weekend yeah